Why does God allow suffering in the world today? This is a question that's plagued mankind for centuries and centuries. And today I want to talk just a little bit about what I've studied and through a personal walk and relationship with Jesus Christ on what I firmly believe scripture has to say about this age old question. Welcome back. So like I said, we're going to look at the concept of suffering. Why does God allow suffering in our lives today? And I don't want to talk really about the big broad scheme of suffering. I want to really focus on the believers, the Christians. Why does God allow suffering in our own lives? Now we can look at the story of Job and see that he's lost everything. He lost his livestock, he lost his livelihood, his home, his family even his physical health. Why is the question that we're tending to ask God when we're in situations like Job? And through personal studies and reflection upon this and in looking at different authors and scholars and theologians, I think I've came up with about four major reasons why God would allow suffering into the world today. So I don't know if you're going through something now, but I know you went through something in the past because so did I. We've all went through stuff in the past. Got to realize one thing first, right up front. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Okay, so once we're past an event, we can look in a rearview mirror and we can reflect back and be like, "Huh, that's what God was probably doing in my life." Foresight, trying to understand and put the pieces together in the midst of suffering. Foresight is twenty four hundred, and it is blind. We do not know, but we trust. You see, I want to start with this quote that a great friend of mine once said when him and his wife went through the very traumatic time of having a miscarriage. You see, my buddy said, believing in God or not believing in God doesn't remove the pain, but not believing in God removes the hope. And that was deep. That was very deep. And so today we're going to look at some of the hope and some of the purpose God may have in the suffering in our lives today. You see, the first thing we could find in Acts chapter 9, you remember when Paul got converted on the Damascus Road? Well, he was blind and then he had scales over his island. Well, it was then that he went to the house of Ananias and he was told to tell Paul of what great things Paul would suffer for Jesus Christ's name. And so if you know anything about the life of Paul, and he was one of the greatest evangelists ever. But yet he went through some very tumultuous and very troubling hardships. He was beaten by the Jews. He was in prison. He was shipwrecked. So many things happened to him. And I'm sure he asked the question, why? But one thing right off the bat, according to Acts chapter 9, I'm thinking, not, maybe not necessarily in Paul's life, but in yours and mine, maybe whatever the case is, that there is a biblical principle of reaping what we sow. And so maybe we're going through suffering at a moment or in the past because of how we were in the past. You see, Paul, before he got saved and converted on the Damascus Road, he was very injurious to the church and to the followers of the way. And so maybe this was part of the reaping and sowing. Maybe it was the fact that God knew he would have the strength like Job and get through it and use it for God's glory and honor. See, that's just the first. And I don't know if many people are in that situation, but the second one we often overlook because we want to think that God's always going to give us health, wealth, and everything else, but that's not the case. You see, the second one is going to be found in Hebrews chapter 12. For Hebrews chapter 12, the author quotes an Old Testament passage that says, For whom the Lord love, he chastens. And so, sometimes we go through suffering in our lives because we are being disobedient children of God. You see, once you get saved and you're in this relationship with God and we are adopted children into his family, God expects us to live a certain way and act a certain way and think a certain way. And if we're disobedient in what God wants us to do, then just like a father or a mother would discipline their kids to get them back on the right corrective action, so is the similar concept with God. So maybe our suffering in our lives is to bring us back into the right relationship and fellowship with God. 
You see the third thing, and look at that, I'm almost done. The third thing in this suffering is the fact that maybe God wants to use you in a greater opportunity you wouldn't have elsewhere. You see, Paul says in the book of Philippians that he was in bonds, he was in prison, in chains, so that he could reach some of the people that were there. If you know anything about Acts chapter 16 and Paul and Silas were there singing praises in midnight. And yet the earthquake happened, and the Philippian jailer said, What must I do to be saved? What did Paul say? Go to church. No. Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You see, if Paul wasn't in those shackles, Paul would never have had the chance and opportunity to reach that Philippian jailer. And being in those shackles, Paul had the opportunity to lead that Philippian jailer to Christ, along with his family. You see, some of the things you're in, and you're like, God, why am I here? is because God wants you to reach people that you otherwise wouldn't know or think about reaching. You see, the fourth reason and the fourth, the fourth thing and the last thing I'm going to talk about as far as suffering is concerned is maybe God wants to use your pain and use the comfort that he's gotten you through it to help others in the same situation. You see, we're told in Romans chapter 8 that all things work together for good for those that are called according to his purposes. You see, maybe God has allowed us to go through suffering because he wants to use the comfort and the experience and how we got through it to help somebody else. You see, my father and my mother are a perfect example of this, and I know you know other people that are like this. You see, my father was diagnosed with bladder cancer, and his faith was so, so marvelous. So he seemed like he had the quintessential faith through it all. And then my mom as a support system and praying and just helping him through everything with the bladder cancer. You see, it was that tragedy that the Lord impressed my father and my mother in their church, Vessel Church in Oklahoma, to start a cancer ministry. You see, the Lord is using the, the pain and the suffering that my parents went through for a greater good and a greater purpose. You see, that's the big thing through suffering. You see... With a Christian and a theistic worldview, we understand that suffering brings purpose. We know that God is going to bring these things together for good. Whether it's bringing us back into a right relationship with Him. Whether it's putting on a corrective plan, a path. Whether it's to reach people we wouldn't otherwise reach. Or whether it's to go ahead and help people that are being in similar situations that we were once in as well. You see, there is a purpose for all of our suffering as a child of God. And I pray you never forget that aspect. So why does God allow suffering? Well, God allows suffering for many reasons. And I can't tell you exactly what your per personal reason is. But reflecting back on it, I'm sure we'll find out the purpose. Keep your eyes open. You see, I, like, I liken it to a bag of Legos. You see, if you have a bag of Legos, you'll have the flat pieces, the rectangular pieces. You'll have just the normal shaped ones. But every once in a while, you'll get this weird shape. And you're looking at this and you're saying, you know what? I don't know what this goes to. So I'm just going to put it over there. You see, the whole time, you're trying to build this Lego piece. But if you don't have that weird shape, then your piece is going to be incomplete. You see, there's a specific place this needs to go to have a complete object. You see, we're down here looking at these weird pieces saying, I have no idea where this fits. Meanwhile, God's up there on his throne the entire time, and he has the perfect picture, the instructions. He's even created it, and he knows exactly where this piece is supposed to go. So, brothers and sisters, I pray you just trust God with this weird shaped piece called suffering in your life, that he knows where it's supposed to be for you, for his glory, for your benefit, and others. So why does God allow suffering? I believe one of those four reasons. Maybe you have some other ideas, scripturally. If you do, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope this video has been a blessing to you. And until next time, God bless.